What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So in this video we're going to talk about how to use photo match with multiple photos in SketchUp to create models. So today's video is brought to you by the Mindsight Studios sale. Um, their winter sale is going on through Monday. You can get 25% off any of the extensions in their extension store including Artisan, Placemaker, um, profile builder. So if you're interested in any of those, make sure you check out the sketchupessentials.com slash mindsight. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we've talked about uh, photo match a little bit in the past. It's basically SketchUp's built-in tool designed to help you create 3D models from photos. And so where we're going to start is we're going to start with the match photo um, toolbar over here in the default tray. And if you can't see that, you're just going to want to go to window, default tray, um, make sure show tray is checked and make sure the box for match photo is checked. And then once you do that, you're gonna have this option over here to add a photo. So we're gonna start off and we're gonna click the little plus button. And so when you click the little plus button, what you're gonna, what you're gonna do is you're gonna navigate to the photos that you wanna use in order to create your model. And in this case, what we want is I have a pair of photos and I downloaded these off of the website House and I'll link to them in the notes down below. This is a, uh, Post and Beam Barn Home by Yankee Barn Homes, but I'll link to that in the notes down below But I basically just wanted to pick a barn that a was kind of simple to model that had kind of a simple shape But B had good uh, that had good images from uh, several different angles of the barn itself And so if you remember when you're working in photo match what you want is you want very clear so you want the perspective lines to go to very clear vanishing points. So in this case, what we've got is we've got um, one, one axis would run along this building and it would go to a vanishing point over here. Then the other axis would run over here. So what you don't want is you don't want like a straight on building. You want a couple different images that, that work with the actual perspective lines. You can see how this also has distinct perspective lines. Um, so we're gonna start off with this side of the building and we're gonna import this image into our model. And so we're gonna select the image for our building and that's gonna pop up your match photo options. And then as we've talked about in the past, when you do this, you're basically setting up your axes along uh, your perspective lines. And so you're gonna take uh, these different dotted lines and you're gonna kinda click and drag them and set them so that they're along the perspective lines in your model. And so we're just gonna start off and I'm just gonna take this green line and I'm gonna use this line of the top part of the roof right here. And I'm gonna set this point right here and then I'm gonna click and drag the other point until it's along this perspective line. And then we're gonna do the same thing down here. So I'm gonna move this down here and place it along this line right here. And then I'm gonna click and drag the end of it over here. And so you can see how now my green axis is set along these perspective lines. And you can see how everything's kind of off. Um, we're gonna fix that in just a second because we're gonna now add the red axis line. So I'm gonna click and drag this down here and then over here. And you can see how I'm positioning this along the perspective lines of this model. And so now we're gonna have to do this one more time. And probably what I'll use is I'll use the top of this glass piece or the top of this window in order to set the red axis. And so now I've got my perspective lines kind of set up. Well, what I want to do is I want to move my blue axis until um, basically wherever I want to start when I'm modeling this model. So in this case, I'm going to move this blue axis so that it's over here along this uh, corner. And you can see how that's a little bit off. And then the other thing you can do, and the reason that I left my default model in here, is because you can adjust the scale by clicking and dragging the blue axis. So you can see how right now my default model, which is the scale of me and Bonnie, is um, it's got me as tall as the building. So obviously the scale's off. Well, if you click and drag down along this, you can actually set the scale of your model so that it's a lot closer. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you can come back in and kind of resize this a little bit later, but um, you're gonna go ahead and set this so that your person and your perspective size looks more right. So I'm gonna leave that right here. Um, I feel like I've got my axis lines pretty much done and I'm gonna go ahead and click done. And so now when I come in here and first of all, if I rotate out of this, um, then I can click on this tab that was created. So basically what this does is this creates a view of your model. 
so that you can come in here and you can orbit around once you generate some geometry and you can just click on this point to come back so now if I come in here and I start drawing so like let's say if I come in here and start drawing you can see how all of my axes are set basically based on this photo so now I can come in here and I can draw this stuff and I can rotate out to see what my geometry looks like but you everything's kinda of matched up to your model so that it's real easy to come in here and finish modeling everything and so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna model this out um, real quick and then I'll come back and we can talk about what we're gonna do with the second part of this but basically you're just gonna use this image as kind of um, as kind of a guide for what this should look like Alright, and so one thing I'm going to do is when I've uh, when I've modeled this corner piece right here and I've got my overhang kind of figured out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this across and I'm just going to flip it using the scale tool and you could also mirror it. But then I'm going to kind of move that in place and basically what I've done there is I've used, once I've created something on one side, I've just kind of flipped it over to the other side in order th so that it'll be the same size. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start push-pulling these different objects. And so what you can do is you can click on this face and then rotate back to the front and you can activate the push-pull tool and since that face was selected you can go ahead and use that to kind of push-pull this along right here. And one thing I'm doing right here is I'm using the push-pull tool in the create new face mode. Um, so if I was to push-pull this, for example, and push-pull it back, first of all, it's going to run into this face right here and it's going to start causing you issues. But if I use it in create new face mode, then it'll just create a new face on the back side um, so that that's not a problem anymore. And so basically all you do to turn on create new face mode is you just tap the control key. So if you look right now, so I'm just tapping the control key and then using the push pull tool. And probably the other thing I'm going to do, because I set this back a little bit on this face. And so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to measure how far I set that back. So in this case, I measured this back, or I set this back eight and three quarters of an inch. Then I'm going to set it back on the other side as well. And so probably, and I'm not 100% sure to be honest with you if this, it looks like this sets back off the back side of the building as well. But I'm going to go ahead and just push this back eight and three quarters of an inch. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and push pull this barn um, and I'm going to do the same thing. You can see how this limits my offset unless I tap the control key and create new face mode. If I tap the control key and create new face mode you can see how it doesn't limit my push pull anymore. It allows me to just create a new face on this back side. And so now, if you go back to your match photo view, you can see that you've got kind of the general shape of your barn kind of roughed out. And obviously there may be some things that you could fix, but for what we're doing right now, this is gonna be perfect. Because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna project the textures from the photo. And so one of the powerful things about photo match is it allows you to take the photo textures that you can see right here and actually project them on the faces that they're over top of. So like for example, if I was to select this face and if I rotate out of it, you can see how there's no textures. But if I click on this face and then click the option for project textures from photo, it's going to ask if I want to trim partially visual, vis, visible faces. Basically what that does is anything that isn't visible, it's not going to apply the material to it. So if I was to say yes, for example, then you'd get a little bit of a gap up here on the top. Because otherwise what it would have done from that angle is it would have applied this green to this corner. So like for example, if I was to come in here and I was to say no, don't trim partially visual faces, it would apply this, but you can see how it left the green along this edge. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave that like that for right now. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to go ahead and apply the textures to these other faces real quick. 
and I'm actually not going to do it for the roof because um, the roof is just kind of a shingle so you can just do that with a texture and kind of get a better look I think I mean you could come in here and apply that if you wanted to the problem is you've got kind of an extreme angle and so everything starts getting distorted so so for right now I'm not going to do that and I'm not gonna model this top part either because the point of this video is more to come in and show you how to do the multiple photo match and so what we've got is we've got this building that's got all your textures on this front side but if you rotate around there's no textures on the back side and so what we want to do is we want to add a second matched photo to this and the other thing I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna figure out what my overhang was on this side so in this case I guess I did it about one foot so we're gonna add that overhang on this other side as well so I'm just gonna click on this face use the push-pull tool to push that out a foot and so now what we need to do is we need to add a match photo to this other side and so in order to do that we're gonna go ahead and click the plus button and you're gonna select your other photo so in this case I've got my building one photo and we're just gonna do the same thing so we're gonna match up our perspective lines on this photo and you can see how this one's a little bit harder because you've got some kind of grass and stuff um, or some uh, plantings kind of blocking some of this but we ought to be able to do it um, I can just use these windows to set up the red so just along the length of these windows and then we'll come in here and we'll set up our green axes as well so and you can see how because of the shape of this barn this is actually pretty easy to do so you just have to set these real quick and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna move this origin point so that everything kinda matches up so you can see how I can move this point right here the point where my axes kinda intersect in order so this can match up and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna resize it and so you can see how I had to click and drag that a little bit but I'm just kinda looking at this other side and seeing kinda when things match up and you can do this both along the red and the green axes so you can see how I'm clicking and dragging this and one thing that isn't working really well is what's going on on this back side over here and so we'll have to mess around with that in a minute what we may end up doing is we may end up bringing this piece in and just manually dumping it on that face so for right now let's just focus on the big face of this barn so and the other thing you could do is you could also set this up so that you could do a match photo of just one side. So you could set up a match photo of one side where uh, you match this up with this face and then do another match photo where you match it up over here um, so that everything kind of fits and works and all of that kind of stuff. Because you can see everything's not exactly working perfectly, but it's working pretty good. So we're pretty close on this. So I'm going to go ahead and click Done on this match photo and you can see how now this is kind of matched up with what we had on the other side and so now if I was to click on building one it would flip this around and line this up with the with image one and if or if I click on building two and if I click on building one it's gonna flip it around to this other side and so now I can take this and I can click project textures from photos and I'm gonna go ahead and say no to trim partially visual face visible faces and you can see that took this texture and it applied it to this face and so what we've got is we've got this building one over here and so what you could do here is there's a couple different options the first is you could go ahead and project the texture from the photo um, say no to trim partially visual faces and you could just kind of live with it as is so you can see how you've got a little bit of a gap in here so that's one option another option is you could create a whole new match photo just for this one face so you could just match up that one face to this front face all right, so the other option that we have in here is we can come into this texture and we can adjust it using the position texture tools. And so you can right click on this image and you can click texture and then you're gonna select position. And there's two different ways that this works. The first way is fixed pin mode. And in fixed pin mode, everything kind of uh, 
each pin does a certain thing. So this one allows you to uh, rotate. This one allows you to kind of skew or scale your texture. Um, this one allows you to kind of distort it and this one allows you to move it. And so you could do it in this mode and just kind of uh, move your texture over and then use the scale option to kind of resize it. So, and that actually looks pretty good. So that's kind of resized and placed on this face. So I'm actually pretty good with that. The other thing you could have done is you could also right click and uncheck the fixed pins. And then you could take each pin and set them to a certain point and then click and drag them and move them on the face. So I'm actually gonna leave it as is because I like the way that turned out. So you can see how now I have my barn building and I have windows on this side and textures from a photo on this side and then textures from a photo on the other side. And now I could come in here and add like a shingle material and if I wanted to I could start kind of tracing over these windows and using them as a base in order to work with this. The other thing we could do is on this face right here, if you remember, um, that didn't show up very well in our match photo. Well what you could do is you could import, so what you could do is you could go to file import and then you could select one of your images and I think this was the building one image you could actually import that as a texture so you can click import and you can import it as a texture and then you could actually use the texture position options in order to place this in here so in this case probably what I would do is I'd go ahead and set my points so I'm just single clicking and moving these um, so that they correspond to the right point in my model because I'm gonna have to click and drag them in a second so once I set my four points then what I can do is I can click and drag each point to the corresponding corners in your model and I know it looks crazy right now but give it just a second and it'll make sense so you can see how I set those corner points and then I click and drag them so that they show up in my model well now that piece of image is now showing up on this face. And I realize it's kind of lower resolution. Um, I'm not using high resolution photos in here. You do have to be a little bit careful with high resolution photos. But now if I come in here and I click done, now I've got this door placed on this face. And I realize this gate's kind of in the way, so you might have to model around some of that. But so that's basically how you would come in here and you would use multiple photos in photo match. And you can do this for as many photos as you want. So basically you're just setting your textures. After you set up your first photo and you start modeling your building, basically you're setting up your other options so that you can place your textures in your model. That's where I'm gonna end today's video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did you know you could do all this with textures in SketchUp? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.